Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, EET 1104, 1134, Lecture 30 for Monday, the 30th of March, and this is Part B, and uh, just to let you know, I'm glad I did this one in two parts, I've been having uh, trouble with my recordings today, uh, but anyway, uh, we uh, in Part A we talked about multisim a little bit, and now I'd like to go ahead and do work another problem relating to Thevenin's and Norton's circuit. So this is uh, figure 9.145 of the homework section. Uh, it uh, works for problems 21 and 29 both. For problem 21, we are asked to do a Thevenin analysis of this circuit. So in other words, we're looking for this open circuit voltage, or if you want to call it the Thevenin voltage, that's fine. Either one works. And uh, since we're looking for a voltage, I guess the temptation here is to do a nodal analysis. Since a nodal analysis returns uh, a voltage as uh, the answers, so I'm going to identify all the nodes. And uh, the, uh, the figure identifies the ground being there, so. I think it makes sense that we just go ahead and call this the zero volt node there. And I'm going to call this node up here V1, this one V2, and we'll label this one V3 node. Okay, so since we're doing nodal analysis and we're looking for a voltage, we will sum currents. So I'm going to sum currents for that first voltage node. We've got one, two, three wires connected to this node here. I'm going to go ahead and do this first wire, which runs all the way down to here. So we start at this node, work to the next node. So we've got V1, and we'll subtract any voltages. We've got a 6 there, and we've got a 0 volts there. Then divide by the sum of the resistances on that wire and we just simply have a 4 ohm resistor so that's easy so that takes care of this wire then now let's take this wire angling down to the left and add it in so I have V1 minus V2 over 2 ohms then we got this wire over here uh, but we have to ask the question is there any current in this wire I see I've got a gap or an open circuit here. Since uh, there's a gap, there is no current, so this wire has nothing. And so, just call it that. And so, the sums of the currents on these wires will give us zero. Now, we're not going to worry about that zero. And then that just leaves us these two wires. And we're going to collect our terms together. We've got a fourth, and then we've got a half. So this term is taken care of, we got that term, we got a minus V2 over a half, that takes care of that term. Only thing left is this minus 6 over 4, so we got minus 6 over 4, and all that still equals 0. Do a further reduction here, a half and a fourth, that's 0 0.75, a V2, 0 0.5, and that's a six-fourth, that's a 1.5, take it to the other side, it becomes positive, 1.5. So here's our first equation. Then we're going to sum the currents for node 2. So here's node 2, we got one, two, three wires again. So I'll go from here up, gives us V2 minus V1 over 2. V2 minus V3 over 4 and add this wire in down here V2 minus 0 over 4 all that equals 0 so let's collect our terms together here starting with V1 over a half plus V2 we've got a half and a fourth, and another fourth. So we've got this V1 term taking care of that one, that one, and that one for the V2s. That leaves us a V3 
over a fourth. That takes care of all of our terms. That was just a zero. And all those currents equal zero. So minus V1, 0 0.5, plus V2, uh, 0 0.5, and 2.5, and 2.5, that's a 1. Minus V3, 0 0.25, equals 0. And so there's our second equation. Now we have the V3 node that we need to sum the currents for. So sum the currents for V3. V3's got this wire going up, this wire going here. Then I look down and I see, oh, that's something strange. Is there a current here in this wire? The answer is definitely yes. But if I were to take a voltmeter, you know, our voltmeter and measure the voltage from here to here, the only thing between the two points is a voltage supply, so I don't need to bother summing the currents for V3 because I know what V3 is. V3 is 2 volts. It's 0 here, 2 up there, so I don't need to sum the currents. V3 is just simply equal to 2 volts. Again, why? Because we have a voltage here at this node, we have a voltage there at that node. The voltage down here is zero, by definition. The voltage up here, well, we just put the red lead there and the black lead there. What's in between? Two volts. So that is a two volt node. So we didn't have to sum currents for that one. So that turned out rather nicely for us. So. We've got our three equations here. And so, well, let's go ahead and just build our matrix system. We've got a V1, a V2, and a V3. We have our first equation with a 0 0.75. Uh, then we have a minus 0 0.5 then there's no V3 term in that first equation. And the constant there is 1.5. We have our second equation, which has a minus 0 0.5, a 1, and a minus 0 0.25. The constant there is 0. Then for our V3 equation, we didn't have a V1 term. We did not have a V2 term. So this is from right here. There's no V1. There's no V2. There's one V3. And then the constant out there is 2. So that gives us a V1, a V2, and a V3. So I'm going to fire up my handy calculator here and hopefully you are doing the same thing because I'm sure you need as much practice as you can possibly get using your calculator. I know I do mine. Even though I do this every semester, I still need to practice. And uh, so I'm going to call up my 3x3 three three matrix. And I've got a 0.75, a 0.5 negative, a 0, a 0.5 negative, a 1, a 0.25 negative, 0, 0, 1. Make sure I've got 0 0.75, 0 0.5 negative, 0, 0.5, 1, 0.25, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so that looks good. Go to my 3 by 1 vector, get the 1.5 in there, 0 and a 2, and then I'm going to call up my matrices. So there's my 3x3. Three three. I'm going to go ahead and take the inverse of it and call up my vector, multiply them, and yeah, I've verified my V3 value is 2 volts, so I like that. And so this gives us 3.5 volts, 2.25 volts, and 2.0 volts. And what are we looking for? We're looking for V thevenin. 
I want to know what that is equal to. Well, let's go back to our original circuit here. The Thevenin is the voltage between these two points. There's a voltage here, then there's a voltage there. The voltage here is V1. The voltage here is V3. So the Thevenin voltage is V1 minus V3. So V1 minus V3. So V Thevenin is equal to 3.5 volts minus 2 volts. So V Thevenin is equal to 1.5 volts. Okay, so that wasn't too bad uh, to get that Thevenin voltage. That worked out uh, pretty simply, I believe, for us. Now we need to go back and build that circuit again. I'm not drawing it quite as nicely this time. Not like the first time was all that nice. Okay, so we've got a rather crooked circuit there. Now we want to do the I Norton analysis of it. And uh, doing I Norton, that means probably do mesh analysis since we're looking for a current. In this case, we're looking for the short circuit current or the I Norton. I Norton or I short circuit. And so. We want to do mesh analysis, or step one is to draw our mesh current loops. I'll call that I1, call this one an I2, and then we got an I3 here. Three mesh currents means three equations, most likely in a way. So. Let's go ahead and start those three equations for this right here. So we're looking for current, so when I'm looking for a current I'm going to sum the voltages. Sum the voltages for loop one. So we've got I1 and it looks like we've got a 4 ohm, a 2 ohm, and a 4 ohm, so that's 10 ohms all together. Subtract the I2 portion which is reaching through that 2 ohm resistor. Subtract the I3 portion, which is through that 4 ohm resistor. And then we've got a... So we've got all the resistors taken care of, I1, I2, I3 terms taken care of. Then we've got this voltage supply for the little head, and that's a minus 6 volts. So minus 6 goes here. If I'm going to go ahead and carry it over to the other side, so it becomes a positive 6. So this is our first equation. Then we're going to sum the voltages for the second loop. So we got the minus I1 times 2 plus I3, I2, excuse me, I2. We got a 2 and a 4, that's a 6. Minus I3, which touches a 4 ohm right there between the two. No voltage supply, so it just equals 0. Sum the voltages for I3, minus I1 times 4, minus I2 times 4, plus I3, which touches a 4 and a 4, so that's 8. And we got a plus 2 voltage supply. Go ahead and take it to the other side of the equal sign, it becomes a minus 2. So there are our three equations for the loops. And so we set up our system, got an I1, an I2, and an I3. So we have 10 minus 2 minus 4 minus 6, minus 2 minus 6 minus 4 
zero minus four minus four eight minus two so we're going to look for our answers again I'm going to let my calculator do the work because I'm lazy that way so I'm going to go ahead and get uh, my 3 by 3 matrix entered we've got a 10 a minus 2 a minus 4 a minus 2 a 6 a minus 4 a minus 4 a minus 4 and an 8 verify the numbers yes that looks good and then we'll call up my vector And then we got a 6, a 0, and a minus 2. And then call it the matrix. There's the first one. Go and invert it. And then then we'll call it my next one. Multiply it. And then these are the answers I get. One amp, 0 0.75 amps, 0 0.625 amps. Well, I'm not too sure about those answers. I may have made a, it uh, doesn't seem right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like those answers. They verify what I've had before when I've worked the problem before. So, but I think I do remember that uh, they may disagree with the author's answers in the back of the book. So, I feel pretty good about these answers and not so good about the author's answers if, they're, if they are indeed different. That's kind of why I remember. But anyway, the question we're asking is what is I Norton? Well, Norton's out here. Whoops, wrong drawing. Hello. Oh, oh, there we are. I Norton's right there, and that's simply the I2 current going through there. So, I Norton is equal to I2. So, I Norton is 0 0.75 amps. Are we finished? And the answer to that question is no. We still need to draw our Thevenin and Norton circuits. So a Thevenin circuit is a Thevenin voltage in series with the Thevenin resistance and the load resistance. I believe this was 300 ohms given in the uh, problem statement. Oh, we need our Thevenin. Okay, so our Thevenin. What is our Thevenin? Well, it's equal to R Norton, which is equal to our Thevenin voltage, which is 1.5 volts, divided by our Norton current, which is 0 0.75 amps, which that is 2, ohm, two ohms. Yeah. So this is 2 ohms. This is 1.5 volts. So that's the Thevenin circuit. Now we need our Norton circuit. Norton circuits, things are in parallel. That's a good thing to put in your note sheet. That Thevenin circuits are in series, Norton circuits in parallel, uh, because students, they get to the exam, and they've got all the adrenaline flowing, and they forget which one is which, and they forget how to do mesh analysis, they forget how to do nodal analysis, so make sure you have in your exam notes how to do things, what things look like. And this is the load, which is 300 ohms. This is the Norton resistance. And this is 0.75 amps. And speaking of the exam, the next one is scheduled for Friday. My plan is to put that exam on Canvas. That means if you, uh, as you should, you should uh, 
open up your canvas at 1030 on Friday morning. Why? Because that is when the exam will be scheduled. It will be scheduled for one hour from 1030 to 1130. My plan is to make it a 50 minute exam, so if you're a few minutes late, you, you got, you'll you still have 50 minutes to work it. So this coming Friday at 10.30, open up Canvas, or actually probably a little bit before 10.30, open up Canvas. Then at 10.30, the quiz or the exam on Friday will be available to you for, fifth, for one hour. The exam will be open book, open note, use your calculator you will need to have your own scratch paper pencils erasers whatever you need you will do the work on your scratch paper and then you will select the proper answer from the multiple choices for each question so in other words you may have a mesh analysis circuit and I will give you four different answers for whatever it is and you need to be able to determine which answer is the correct answer. So it will not be a paper exam in the sense that you put your answers on paper. You will simply select the answers on Canvas, but you'll need to do the work on your own. Again, it'll be open book, open note, and timed for one hour. Uh, Wednesday we will talk more specifically about what to expect on the exam. So hang in there, keep doing your homework, and hopefully we'll see each other someday, and uh, stay healthy.